living your most heroic and courageous story. Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Yellow Chair Podcast with X, where we deep dive into the stories that drive our lives. All right, listen, listen, listen. Being heroic and being courageous is that thing that we just crave, right? Being able to look in the mirror and say, We've done the right thing for the right reasons at the right time. We stood up to adversity, obstacles, and challenge. We showed up our best self. We were courageous and heroic when it counted. And conversely, some of the hardest times, at least that I've had to deal with, is looking in the mirror and knowing full well that I didn't make that choice, that I wasn't heroic, I wasn't courageous that I bowed down to the challenge and the pressure and I retreated and I didn't live up to the idea of who I want to be. And those are some of my biggest regrets in life. If I have any, it would be those moments. And I come across so many people who are having that battle rage inside of them today. There's so many choices in their life where they feel the pressure and the challenge to rise above it, and they know what the right thing is to do, and they know what that thing would be uh, framed up in a courageous and more heroic light, but they so often choose to do the safe thing, the sure thing, the thing that plays beneath their highest potential. And I get that question, well, how do I live my most heroic and courageous story? Not just understand it, not just see it, not just uh, have a glimpse of it to where we're torturing ourselves because we're not living up to it. How do I live it? How do I live, breathe, and make this thing real? And I'm going to share with you a very simple idea to do just that. But before I do that, I want to I frame up what heroism and courage really looks like, what that story is. And one of my favorite movies uh, that, that demonstrates this, and this is in every movie, every story that we love, you'll find this example of the hero and the courage going through a similar situation. It's Die Hard. I think it's the first Die Hard where Bruce Willis is on the roof and they have the hostages up there and and they're about to be bombed or something like that. And he starts shooting the gun, trying to scatter the crowd. And the police think he's a terrorist. So the police and the helicopter start shooting at him. And he's like, what? the? I'm on your side. I'm on your side. And the bomb is about to go off. The, the police are shooting at him and he ties that water hose around his waist. You remember that scene? If you haven't seen Die Hard, check it out. But in that scene, he says something. Never even think about going up in a tall building again. Please don't let me die. He's like, okay, I gotta do this. I hope I don't die. All right, all right. Like, like, like he's weighing his situation. He's, he's doing a calibration of, if I do do this, man, if I don't do this, man. And he makes the choice to jump off the roof to save his life and to continue the battle. And that's what courage and heroism looks like. It's not something we do in a vacuum. It is something that the conditions almost dictate, meaning there's pressure to be heroic. There's pressure to be courageous. You can't do it in a vacuum. You have to have pressure. And in that pressure situation, you have a choice, right? Do you retreat and do the thing that would be quote unquote cowardly as you define it? Or do you rise and do the heroic and courageous thing? But we all experience pressure, but there's a secondary ingredient that makes for an heroic story or a courageous action, and that is purpose. You see, the hero has to have purpose. He or she has to know what's on the line if they don't take action. He or she has to know what will be the cost of sitting and doing nothing. They have to understand intellectually, meaning mentally, emotionally, physically, even spiritually, what the costs are. And as such, you have pressure and you have purpose. And now that decision becomes a lot easier. Because if I do nothing, I die. If I do nothing, the people I love die. If I sit and just wait and watch, I can't live with myself. 
So that's the misnomer or the disconnect that I think many people have when trying to live their most heroic and courageous story. They, one, they don't have a pressure-filled situation that requires heroics. It doesn't exist. But we're trying to measure ourselves and put ourselves into that position. But human nature is very simple. Necessity is the mother of invention. We have to have a necessary and real-world opportunity with enough pressure to push us into taking risk. Because our mind is hardwired to want to be safe, secure, right? But with enough pressure, we have to make a decision. But the mind will opt for the safe and secure route unless there's what? Purpose. Purpose. An all-encompassing why and what that pushes us to understand mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually the cost of inaction and the potential reward of taking action. And it is in that moment when purpose meets pressure that we find heroism, courage. And from that perspective, it's not necessarily something that's noble or moral. It is something that we're quite literally compelled to do. Now, I I want you to sit back and really think about that for every single time you measured yourself against this bar of being, quote unquote, a hero and courageous versus being cowardly or making that decision you regret. I promise you, it wasn't a pressure filled situation and you're making a mountain all of a molehill or and secondarily, there just wasn't any purpose. There was no real cost involved in inaction or no real reward in making the quote unquote heroic or courageous decision. There wasn't enough pressure and there wasn't a purpose. That's the bottom line. And if you evaluate every story of quote unquote heroism and courage, you'll find the same ingredients, right? Whether it's a movie you're watching, a book you're reading, anything, a viral video, right? You'll see pressure meets purpose, hence hero and courageous story. And if you take away any two of those, the purpose or pressure, there is no hero. There is no courage. It could be outright dumb and risky, comedic. Think about all the people who dumb, who do crazy stuff like jump out of buildings or uh, 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 do some crazy stunt that has a whole lot of risk in it. But we're not purview to the purpose. It just there's no purpose in that regard. You're just dumb. You're taking unnecessary risk. So those two things need to meet purpose and pressure. So how do we create this and create an environment where pressure and purpose meet up to help us to be our most courageous and purposeful self? Well, number one, you got to connect to your purpose. You have to know your story. It makes things a whole lot easier and really judging what it is that you're here to do, how you should be thinking, feeling and acting. If you don't know your purpose, your why, it's very hard to understand what it is that you should be aiming at. So now when that that puzzle piece is missing, we tend to judge ourselves by a whole bunch of other shit that just doesn't matter. So number one, get in contact with your purpose, your why. And if you find that difficult, because it can be difficult, I'm still searching and finding, refining my why every single day. A stand in for an all encompassing why is a very powerful what. What is it that you truly want? It could be material. It could be a whole lot of money. It could be fame. It could be to be loved. It could be anything as long as that what is powerfully driving. What is it that you want? So in my kind of story process, especially working with younger people, I tell you, say, stop. Okay, why is difficult to get? I get it. If we had some time, we could work it out and we could figure it out. But I want you to focus on that. What at least what is it that you truly want? Because if you start orienting your life towards that, what you'll start taking actions inside of it and you'll figure out your why you'll figure out all the bumps and bruises, the ups and downs and all the things that align your past, present and future. And that why will start to become very clear in the pursuit of an all encompassing what. So that's step number one. Get in contact with your purpose, your why and your what. Know it so that you can think, feel, and do inside of that. That's number one. 
Now, number two, this is the part that <laughs> in my life I've had to play this game and it's, it's worked miracles. You got to create a situation that puts pressure on you. If you're not jumping into the ring, do not expect to be a champion. It just, it just doesn't work. We need the pressure, right? Pressure put onto an old lumpy piece of coal turns into a diamond. We require it to access our best self, that most heroic and courageous part of us. So you got to orchestrate pressure-filled situations if they aren't coming into your life as a natural occurrence. And that's me. I, 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 just, I just don't have these pressure-filled moments in my life throughout. I've had to always create them to jump into the ring. Even literally, when I was dealing with my, uh, my fear of physical confrontation, I had to become a professional mixed martial artist and jump into a ring and fight. Like I had to create a purpose-driven, pressure-filled situation that forced me to look in the mirror and say, stand up or else. <laughs> so I fought in the cage back in 2004, 2005, professionally, uh, a few fights, and it was the scariest, most pressure-filled situation I had to date, and it transformed my life. But I had to create it. Now, I'm not saying you need to go jump into a ring, but here's what I am saying is create or orchestrate or facilitate pressure. And I'll give you another example of my business life. When I was starting out trying to get sales work, which I had no experience in, and I wanted someone to give me a chance, I, 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 I put myself on this position. I'm going to walk into 10 dealerships, and I'm going to say, I'm going to train your team to better sell cars, knowing I had never done it, knowing that I didn't even know what I was going to say or do, but I needed to create the condition, i.e. the pressure, to make me perform. So I did that. All nine said no until one said yes. And I was almost hoping that that 10th one would say no. But they said, yeah, come back next Tuesday. I was like, really? Tuesday? Yeah, come back Tuesday. We have a sales meeting. You have 30 minutes to help us. I had six days, y'all, to create a sales program for a car dealership. And guess what? I did it. Now, if I didn't have the pressure... I wouldn't have done it. I would have twiddled my thumbs and, and, and pretended in my head that I was doing something, but it was the pressure of that situation. And I've done that time and time again in my business career in walking into situations where I didn't have the quote unquote experience, but I put forward a bold claim and then someone bit and now I was on the hook to deliver. And that pattern has saved my life. Quite literally, business-wise, in my marriage, with my kids as a father, in my body, the whole nine, when I feel stagnant or stuck, I know that the next thing for me to do is to cleave and connect to my purpose, my why and my what, and then number two, to put myself in a position where I can create pressure by stepping into a ring. Now, you have to define for yourself what that ring looks like so you're not jumping into something where you're annihilated. I'm not saying be a martyr. But create a condition. So let's break this down and make this actionable for you. Number one, if you're looking to live your most heroic and courageous story, try to connect to your why. What is it that drives you, connects you to everything? You see, my why, I understand it and I'm so connected to it. My why is to, is to help people to fight through their biggest pain, problems and fears so that they heroically break through. The heroic breakthrough is what turns me on. It's what drives me. Not because I, I, I just want to see everyone else do it, but because that's what I need in my own life to heroically break through. It's those moments that, that I live for. And I understand that. Going back to a little kid, helpless, driven by fear, uh, put in a position to have to go through all types of traumatic experiences. And all I wanted was someone or something to help me to break through. So I had to depend on myself. I had to figure it out. And it was that relationship with myself that I knew was a driving force. And, and as an adult, I could see it, that same need, that same story of wanting to help people break through. And now I'm connected to that. And I have a what, too. 
a defining kind of measurement of that. I want to impact 100 million people's lives, right? And make $100 million with this all-encompassing story. If, if what is on my table doesn't fit that story, I punt. It's, it, it doesn't line up. So I have a very simple kind of easy yes, no a situation where I don't have to judge myself against shit that just doesn't line up with my story, my purpose, my why. So what is your what or your why, your story? And if you can't connect the why, put forward a powerful what. Number two, orchestrate and create conditions that create pressure. You stepping into a ring that now pushes you to be heroic and courageous because necessity is the mother of invention and heroism and courage is an invention right it's something we tap into in the moment because it's dictated by the moment it's required so purpose and pressure and that's how you live your most heroic and courageous story hey fam thanks again for joining me in the yellow chair i want to invite you to go even deeper to take this to the next level by pulling out your phone and texting me at 800-425-2095. That's 800-425-2095. That's my direct number. Type in the word yellow chair. And when you text me, you'll be joining my X Factor weekly insider community where I send out resources to help you to continue to storify your life and to lead your story. So don't miss that opportunity. 800-425-2095. Thanks again for joining me here in the yellow chair. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share these podcasts. We're trying to change 100 million people's lives and you're a part of that. So thank you again. And I see you in the next yellow chair. I'm out.